I don't typically go live on TikTok, but I'm trying out that platform. I don't know if I can say uh, <laughs> the platform's name on here on this platform and vice versa, but I'm live on YouTube. I'm also live on the TikTok, okay? Uh, whatever platform you prefer, you can go catch me or find me on the TikTok platform at Shybivia. So yeah, that's my uh, name over on TikTok. If you are joining me here for the first time, welcome. Thanks for stopping by and hitting that play button. Uh, I am Shy Bivia, aka uh, Shanice Bryant, and I am a funding specialist. I help uh, entrepreneurs properly launch their business, properly scale their business, and better position their business for funding. Okay, I help entrepreneurs uh, launch a credible business. Uh, that is super, super important, uh, especially as a, you know, a startup, a new business owner, you want to make sure that you are doing things right the first time. And so today, and there's a lot of reasons why you want to make sure that you're doing things right the first time. For one, you want to make sure that you are attracting, uh, of course, the right clientele, right? So when you are positioned as if you are a credible business, you're going to attract clientele to you. Uh, you're going to be able to attract lenders, okay? When you go to apply for funding, which we're going to talk about in a second, when you go to apply for funding and all of that, uh, let me see if I'm live here on YouTube. Am I live? On, I mean, Facebook. Let's see if we're live on Facebook. I don't know if we are live on Facebook, but um, anywho, uh, when you you want to be able to, you want to make sure that you're attracting lenders. You're you want to be able to, you want to make sure that you're attracting, you know, the right clientele, right? So we're gonna talk about the steps that you should be taking to launching a credible business to launching a properly structured business okay to where your business looks credible again to lenders not only to lenders uh yes you know you want to make sure that you are positioning better positioning your business for funding but you also want to look credible to your audience to clients potential clients potential customers okay so that's what we're going to be talking about uh, tonight, if you are new here joining me for the first time, let me know where you are joining me from. Let me know where you are joining me from. First things first. Welcome, welcome. Let me know where you are joining me from. Also, let me know if you are a, uh, you know, business owner, whether you're a new business owner or if you plan on starting a new business. Let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments. Let me see if I can go over here on TikTok. Uh, let's see. You are joining from, hey, Shalise, you are joining me from Texas. I'm in Texas too, girl. <laughs> I'm in Texas as well. Moved to Texas in 2021. One of the best decisions that we have made, honestly. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I should. No, it's okay. I'm going to leave the tea talk alone. <laughs> I don't mess with tea talk too much, but hey, I'm going to try out this whole live thing on TikTok today. Uh, yeah, thanks for joining me, Shalise. So I'm super excited. Let me know, Shalise, if you are a new business owner or you plan on starting a business and, you know, let me know as well one of your biggest questions that you've, you've, you've had uh, about launching a business if you plan on launching one or even if you are already a business owner. I think I'm going to spend about maybe 45 minutes today to about an hour on today's live. Make sure that you are grabbing a, a notepad as well. Grab a notepad 
and grab a pen because I have some things to share with you all today, okay? I've been supposed to, you know, do this live, but I am here. Okay, anywho, let's get right into it. So the reason why you want to do things right the first time when you launch a business is because do-overs aren't fun, <laughs> right? Do-overs are simply not fun. Uh, and, you know, it, it just takes it takes time. Um, not saying that if you made mistakes before when launching a business, not saying that you can't correct those, right? You can 100% correct those mistakes that you have made. Uh, but I'm here. The reason why I'm here is to help you to not have to make those mistakes in the first time. I'm here to help you launch like a boss. Okay. Launch that biz properly the first time. Shelly says, I am sort of a new business owner. I create custom shirts and different items and I rent homes. I'm just a business owner on paper. Why do you say you're just a business owner on paper, Shalise? I'm curious. You say that you are sort of, uh, okay, sort of a new business owner. Gotcha. That's awesome. Custom t-shirts and you rent homes. That's amazing. That is amazing. Real estate is the way to go, friend. So congratulations on that. All right, perfect. Let's get right into this, okay? No more lollygagging. I know I promised you guys that I will be, I would have been here an hour ago. Technicalities happen. Um, hate that it had to happen tonight because I know it's a Sunday night, but you know what? I was determined and committed to still show up tonight regardless of all the technicalities and all of that. So I'm here. All right, so first things first. When, when you're launching a business, um, you want to, one of the mistakes that I see a lot of entrepreneurs make is using their uh, personal address, okay? So I have about 10 steps or 10, you know, mistakes that entrepreneurs make that I'm going to be sharing with you guys tonight. Uh, but one of the mistakes that I see a lot of entrepreneurs make is, you know, they, they use their personal address. And I'll share with you why that's something that you don't want to do. Number one is your personal address is public information. Your residential address is public information. So when you register your business and you register it in your using your personal address, it's now out there, right? It does not matter if you run a business from home. It doesn't matter if you run the business from home. Uh, you can use what is called a virtual address, okay? What I see a lot of people do is they end up using the, the, their personal address and then later on they regret it and now they have to go back and alter the business address, which you can absolutely do. I'm not here to say that if you did that, there's no turning back and there's no means or way to correct the issue, you 100% can. You just have to uh, go to your secretary of state and change your address using whatever method they, you know, require, right? Whether that's mailing something in or doing it online and whatnot. But you don't want to use your personal address also uh, because if you go to apply for funding or something, what will happen is uh, lenders will see that you're using your personal address. And for some reason, it's it just doesn't, you know, lenders prefer not to have, it doesn't sit well with them, okay? Lenders don't like that, you using your personal address, as simple as it may seem, okay? So what you want to do is just go out and get a virtual address. And what this is, is uh, it's an address with, you know, like a suite number, you want to stay away from the ones that have like PO boxes, because when you go to apply for stuff, you know, funding or anything like that, or, you know, business credit stuff, they will reject the PO box 
the PO box uh, addresses. So you want a virtual address that has like a suite number. Uh, there are many of them. There is Opus, which I now prefer. Uh, there's I'm not even going to mention the other one because I don't like, I really, I used their services before and um, I really did not like it, but there are different companies that you can sign up for to get a virtual address for your business. If you have a at home business uh, or you just prefer to use a virtual address, you can get your mail there, you can get your mail scanned to you and all of that jazz, okay? Um, with a virtual address now the reason why i say you want to do that first okay a lot of people may think that it sounds sounds strange to focus on the address before even registering your business but the reason why you want to do that is you want to figure out like the location and what virtual address you're going to be using for your business because when you go to file or register your business when you go to register your business uh, secretary, secretary of state, uh, they're going to ask you for your business address. So you have to figure that out first. So that's the reason why that's the first thing you want to figure that out first. Okay. All right, cool. So you figured that out. What is your business phone number? All right. Believe it or not, lenders, when you apply for loans, they will they're going to look you up right the the phone number that you give them and and all of that it may not it may not seem like a big deal to a lot of people but trust me it matters okay everything on this list here that i'm going to be sharing with you it matters so you want to figure out what your business phone number is going to be you can usually get that with the virtual office you can get the business number phone number with the virtual office okay uh your business email, you can register a domain. You can go to Dynadot. Um, I'm probably gonna have some notes here in a second, but you can go to Dynadot or uh, GoDaddy or Namecheap. Uh, those are just a few websites that you can go to to get, to buy a domain. So you want to buy a domain, y'all, because I am tired of seeing y'all with, uh, emails or uh, so-called professional emails like um good girl one two three at gmail.com right you don't want to use that type of email for your business that you can use that for your personal stuff but not for your business okay no good girl one two three no bad boy two three four none of that okay <laughs> let's keep it professional uh, go buy a domain, whether from Google, you can actually get a domain from Google too, or, you know, get it from, like I said before, Namecheap, Dynadot, uh, maybe Bluehost, I think, GoDaddy, you know, there's so many different platforms that you can get cheap domains for, uh, or cheap domains from, and it does not cost much, can run you anywhere between $7 to maybe 20 something dollars for the year, for the entire year. Okay, if you are watching on the TikTok, make sure that you are double tapping the screen. Okay, so we can keep the live active as well. Uh, so yeah, get a domain, y'all, because at the end of the day, you're going to want a website, which is another thing that we're going to be talking about. So you might as well just get the domain from the beginning. Okay, so that you can have your professional email, whether that is sales at or info at uh you know whatever that whatever that is um at your domain.com keep it professional let's keep it professional okay all right so you've got your business phone number you've you've got your address you've got your business email okay let me see if i can maybe I can see if i can write it on here can you guys see let's see see if you can see my board you probably can't Okay, so first things first, can you see me? Let's see. Okay, first things first. Uh, virtual address, phone, email. Okay, 
So virtual address, phone, email. Okay, you want all of that good stuff. All right, so now that you've gotten your address, you've figured out what your address is going to be, your phone number, your email. Okay, now we can actually incorporate. Okay, so you're going to incorporate. You can incorporate using a platform called Inkfile. They changed the name to Busy. Uh, it's now known as Busy, B-I-Z-E-E. -E. Um, or you can use... There's legal zoom. You can use legal zoom. You can hire an attorney to incorporate your business for you, whatever works for you. Okay. Uh, you can do it yourself directly by going to your state.gov. So if you live in New York, you know, you can go to New York state.gov or something like that. Georgia, if you live in Texas, Texas state.gov, incorporate your business yourself. Uh, typically, it's usually cheaper because the other platforms usually charge. But I know that Inkfile, uh, you can do it for free actually with Inkfile. Okay. So, well, free except for the state fee. So, <laughs> yeah, you can do it for free except for the state fee using Inkfile, now known as Busy. Okay, Inkfile, now known as Busy. So you can incorporate. When you incorporate, again, they're going to ask you for your business address. So that's why we wanted to figure out what our business address is going to be in the beginning. That's the first thing, okay? Then we incorporate. The third thing, when you incorporate, you want to, uh, you want to get your EIN, all right? Do not let anybody charge you for an EIN. Even the platform, like I mentioned before, Inkfile, uh, now known as Busy, they will upsell you or try to upsell you for an EIN, right? Known as your employer identification number. You don't need to purchase that, uh, that, that service because you can go do it yourself, irs.gov. Okay, just go to irs.gov. So that the next second thing, like I said, is incorporate. Then you're going to get your EIN. All right, now here's the thing. Some of you guys may, um, may have, let's say, started a side hustle, right? You're just doing a side hustle. You know, you're not taking it seriously or anything like that. You're just trying it out. You're just trying out this business idea. That's cool. Try it out. See if it works for you. If you find that this is something that you plan on taking seriously, okay, then you need to treat it like an actual business. Okay, you need to show up and treat it like an actual business. So you want to... Uh, Make sure that you're incorporating, okay? Make sure that you are eventually incorporating, okay? You don't want to, no, you don't have to incorporate as soon as you think of a business idea, right? You don't have to um, because you don't want to spend money to incorporate a business and then two weeks from now, you realize that this is something that you actually don't want to do, all right? So, you don't have to, but like I said before, if you plan on taking this seriously and you plan on treating it like an actual business, then you want to go ahead and incorporate, all right? It's going to be the best decision, trust me, because down the line, again, we're going to talk about funding and all of that stuff. Uh, the earlier you incorporate, the better, because sometimes when you go to apply for certain loans, or you know capital or you know grants even some grant programs some grant programs will require that you are in business for a specific period of time so the earlier you you incorporate the better all right so where was i yeah so you're gonna get your ein let's go back on track so get your ein from irs.gov you don't need to pay for this it is free okay EIN it is free it's free 99.com <laughs> all right free 99 at irs.com all right so go get your EIN and your EIN 
is basically your tax ID, your tax uh, ID number that identifies your business with the IRS. When you go to file your taxes, all of that, that's how you are identified. So that is why it's important for you to have your EIN, okay? The next number that you need, and a lot of business owners miss this, is uh, the, the next thing you need is your DUNS number. You absolutely need your DUNS number. Uh, let me know in the chat if you know what this is. If you already have your DUNS number, let me know in the chat if you know what this is. Okay, so you need your DUNS number. It stands for your data universal, the data universal numbering system. This is what identifies the existence of your business globally. When you go to apply for sometimes uh, an apartment, do a corporate lease or something, or you go to apply for funding to purchase a vehicle, lease an equipment in your business name, they're going to search your, for your DUNS, uh, they're gonna search your, your number in that data universal numbering system. Uh, the DUNS number uh, also has, it's tied to a credit scoring system. So there are three major business credit reporting agencies. So that's Dun & Bradstreet, okay? That's where you, you're going to get your DUNS number from. You're going to go to Dun & Bradstreet. You can go to dunandbradstreet.com, get your DUNS number, okay? In order to build solid business credit, or in order to build business credit, sometimes acquire funding, you'll need your DUNS number. In fact, there are some grant programs who require you to have a DUNS number, okay? So you want to go to Dun & Bradstreet and apply for your DUNS number. It is free to do so, actually. Uh, Dun & Bradstreet is like one of the largest um you know, the, the one of the largest business uh, like databases. So, you know, as a business owner, you definitely want to make sure that you 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 have that. Um, it's free unless you want to expedite the process. So, you can expedite the process by paying, right? But I think you pay like two hundred and something dollars to expedite the process. I made some good old strawberries. It tastes pretty good. Got some stra strawberries, some organic strawberries today from the farmer's market with some lemons. It tastes pretty good. Uh, but yes, you can pay for your Dun & Bradstreet number if you want it to be expedited. It typically takes about, it can take up to 60 days for you to get it back, honestly. But if you have it expedited, you can get it back within seven days, seven to like 14 days if you have it expedited, okay? Uh, the next thing you want is a business bank account, all right? And the reason why you want your EIN and all of that stuff, incorporation and all of that done first is because when you go to apply for a business bank account, they will ask you for your EIN. They will ask you for your articles of incorporation or, you know, whatever documents you have that proves that you have an incorporated a registered business okay they will ask you for that information so you want to make sure that you have your EIN ready to go and you will get uh, what is that okay what is that all right so yeah you want to make sure that you are definitely getting your uh, what is that okay <laughs> you want to make sure that you are if you're watching on YouTube, sorry y'all, I'm also trying to monitor my TikTok over here, my T-talk. Um, so yeah, they will ask you for your articles of incorporation, your EIN, you know, anything that proves that you have a registered business. Now, when it comes to business bank accounts, y'all, it depends on your industry. Let's talk about industries. Let's talk about industries, uh, well, restricted industries, I should say. I have a guide somewhere on my in my link somewhere that, um, thanks for the likes over there on TikTok. <laughs> um, when it comes to restricted industries, there are 
some banks who will deny your application for a new business if you are in certain industries. So I think I have, I shared something on my YouTube uh, maybe it's in my stand store somewhere on my links. If you like play around with my links in my bios, you may be able to find that free list where I shared restricted industries or high risk. Yes, high risk industries. So there are some lenders who will not lend to certain industries. That's just the way it is. Like some of some of the industries are like. Uh, you know, I guess, you know what? I think that's why <laughs> I think I can't say certain things on here because I don't want my live to be blocked, but you can just go find that list of restricted industries. Okay. Um, so, but if you apply with banks like Blue Vine, these are like fintech banks, which they're cool because they're pretty much online banks and it's easy to get approved for. So there is Blue Vine, there is Novo. These are like business banks that you can go to and open up your business bank account on the spot. Okay, it's really easy. Uh, you can do this completely online. You don't need to use those you know big banks all the time uh that half the time are going to turn around and de decline your application for a business loan as a new business owner trust me i know okay i've been in, in in this industry for a while now and if you do your research about 88 to about 90 percent of business owners who apply for funding is denied Okay, about 88 to about 90, 90 something percent of business owners who apply for funding are denied for funding thanks to the alternative lending industry, which we're going to get into uh, in a second. All right, so you want to use, you don't have to, you can absolutely use your local bank. Sometimes local banks can be beneficial because they they sometimes are ready to give you funding, right? Especially if you have a certain uh, credit rating, which we can talk about in another live or, you know, in another time. But you can absolutely go with your local credit union. Credit unions love to lend because that's their bread and butter, okay? I used to work at a, uh, a credit union myself. Uh, I worked in different roles. I did different roles in... Um, you know, back uh, at a credit union that I worked with. Uh, and so the credit credit unions kind of work together in a sense. Um, and, but that's their bread and butter, okay? That's their bread and butter, giving loans. <laughs> Trust me. I remember when I used to work at the credit union, they would push, push, uh, upsell this loan, upsell that loan, because that's how they make their, their money, by giving loans, right? So... It's okay to use a local bank or a local credit union if you want to, especially if they are, you know, ready and willing to lend. But there, are the a lot of times the bigger banks, honestly, they don't want to lend to your business unless your business is doing uh, high sales, high volumes, right? So again, that's where the alternative lending uh, platforms come from. But Again, business bank account. Okay, so let's go back. If you're just joining me, welcome. Shy Biva here on this channel. I share lifestyle, side hustle, and business gems that can help you improve the quality of your life and business. Tonight, I'll be sharing with you, I'm sharing with you steps to starting a credible business, okay? How to launch like a boss, launching a credible business. You want to do it right the first time. And so that is what I am here sharing with you all today. We're at step number five. Step number one was to figure out what your address is going to be, get all your business contact information, phone number, email address, you know, all of that stuff, buying your domain, whether from, uh, buying your domain from, what did I say? Bluehost, Dynadot, Namecheap, 
GoDaddy. There are so many different platforms that you can go buy a domain from. You might as well go buy a domain from the beginning because you want to secure that domain. Okay, if, especially if you have a dope name that you want to secure. Secure it on all social media platforms, by the way. I forgot to mention that. Just secure the domain, okay? Because when you secure the domain, that's going to allow you to have a professional uh, a professional email address and all of that good stuff. So uh, get a professional email address, okay? No good boy 234, like I said before, no good girl 123 at gmail.com. We are not doing that. It's 2024, y'all. <laughs> okay, it's 2024. Uh, keep it professional. Do info at yourbusiness.com, all right? So that was step number one. Step number two is to incorporate. I talked about using either ink file or, which is now busy. If you type in ink file, it will still show up, um, but it's now called busy, or you can use legal zoom or get an attorney to incorporate for you. Step number three, like I said before, uh, is get an EIN for free. Don't let anybody charge you for an EIN. I can't tell you how many times I've seen this where people are charging people to get them an EIN. Even if you use one of these platforms, like I said before, Inkfile, the reason why I'm suggesting Inkfile to you all is because Inkfile actually does it for you for free. If you go with the standard option of just filing your business with the Secretary of State, whatever state you are in, okay, if you go with that option, you can have it, just that option, you can have them do it for you for free except for the state fee. So there is going to be a state fee, whatever the state charges. So, you know, Florida, Florida state fee is different from New York. That's different from Georgia, you know, and the list goes on. So whatever that state fee is, they'll charge you that state fee, but you can have it done, you know, 100% for free. Okay. Uh, then you're going to get your DUNS number. Very important, especially if you plan on getting funding, partnering with you know, whosoever getting corporate leases, leasing equipment, maybe getting a vehicle in your business name, right? So you want to make sure that you're getting your DUNS number because it identifies the existence of your business globally. All right. Next thing, number five is get a, a business bank account. And I forgot to mention this, but one of the reasons why it is so important to get a business bank account is because a lot of time when you go to apply for funding, especially using like an alternative lender, if you don't have a business bank account, there's nothing that they can really do for you. A lot of lenders require, a lot of lenders require that you have a business bank account, okay? Are you guys with me? they require that you have a business bank account. Otherwise, you know, they're not going to lend you money. So you want to make sure that you have a business bank account. And again, you can get this from Bluevine which, uh, or Novo, which are like FinTech banks. So it's super easy to get a business bank account with them. All right, let's move on to number six. You want a website. Where are you going to send your clients to? Where are you going to send your customers to? You can get a website. Actually, <laughs> y'all, ChatGPT, or not ChatGPT, but AI is, I mean, it's it's going on another level, like going to another level. Like there's so many things that you can do with AI, uh, but you can actually <laughs> create a website with Sites GPT for free. Sites GPT for free, okay? Um, go to Sites GPT, create a business website. Uh, let's see. Or you can actually hire somebody to um, hire somebody to create your website for you. Uh, it may be an investment, but it may be worth it because at the end of the day, you don't have to do it yourself. You don't have to spend thirty hours trying to figure out how to create this website, right? Uh, let's see, it's meaning. Hey, Marcia, Marcia says she's anticipating starting a business within the next two months. Awesome. Well, this is the perfect live for you because, uh, 
I'm sharing with you. I don't know how long you've been watching, but I'm sharing with you all how to launch like a boss. Make sure that you have your pens, by the way, and your paper because I'm dropping some gems in uh, this live. Um, I'll make sure that I go back to the top as well just to make sure that you guys did not miss anything. But um, yeah, I'm here to make sure that you launch right the first time, okay? I'm here to make sure that you are launching a credible business how to be better positioned for funding and just overall you know how to set yourself up for success as a new business owner now some people may say you know well that's basic that's simple why would people not know these things well i'm sure <laughs> i'm sure that you know you uh, you yourself don't know everything, right? Um, and some people are just, you know, are new to this kind of stuff, right? Um, we don't know everything, okay? So a lot of things that I'm sharing with you here tonight are things that, you know, I see entrepreneurs make. These are some of the mistakes that entrepreneurs make or some of the steps that I see entrepreneurs skipping or new business owners skipping and you know it just creates it causes them to have to either redo stuff redo stuff or get rejected for stuff right whether that's grants uh funding and all that jazz so that is why i am here to share with you how to launch credibly okay how to launch a fundable business okay you want to be findable and fundable all right Okay, so we're at step number six, which is getting a website. And sometimes some grant programs or some lenders will ask you for your website just because they want a better understanding of what you do as a business. And then at the end of the day, you want somewhere to send your clients to so you can look professional, right? Um, so that's very important getting a, a website set up it can be something very simple y'all you can get people on uh maybe somebody from upwork to create you a simple one page website for you or uh fiverr if you want to you know hey uh, but again you can go to sites gpt and get a free website you just need something somewhere to send your clients to okay next thing step number seven you want a payment processor all right square stripe paypal business not regular paypal but paypal business all right square is perfect for i believe square yeah square is perfect for uh like in-person transactions so if you have a business that requires you to do sales in person uh, square is perfect for that square actually sends you one of those you can get one of those um those chip readers those card readers they send you that so you know you can use that stripe is perfect for like online sales you can use it for you can use square too uh, paypal business is awesome too because you can actually create invoices so you can create professional invoice you know if you are if you use invoicing in your business you can send your customers your clients invoices uh and also paypal for a lot of people don't know this but paypal has what is called working capital which is where they go based on your your activity your, your paypal activity your revenue so uh and also it's strictly your you know your business like your ein and all of that where you can get funding working capital from paypal business if you actually in fact have a paypal uh, business account for a minimum of don't quote me on this because you know things change it may be minimum of three months or six months i can't remember right now but if you have a paypal business account you can possibly get funding right so that's why it's very important to sign up for a payment processor not only that it's 2024 y'all we are not using cash app we're not using venmo only for your business right and we're not just taking cash that's absolutely what we're not doing. We are not <laughs> taking only cash, y'all. Okay? You want somewhere 
where your funds can be tracked. Now, yes, you may use a payment processor. Oh, also, that's another thing. Uh, you don't really want to use only the, like the checking accounts that's only tied to these payment processors, right? You want like an outside bank. So for example, let's say you have a PayPal, a PayPal business account and you're getting your payments there or Stripe or Square, whatever, they will then send the funds, whatever payments you have to your business bank account. You want somewhere that you can track your sales and lenders will see that, hey, these are your sales. You know, this is the income that you have coming in versus cash. Like, how are you going to really track that? I'm not saying that you can't collect cash at all, but you want to definitely be using a payment processor and having deposits, uh, you know, be able to trace that deposit to your uh to your business bank account okay so you want to set up a payment processor that's step number seven step number eight step number eight let me know in the comments as well if you are if you are learning anything <laughs> in today's live let me know in the comments below and let me know as well if you guys have any questions at all Okay, so number eight is you want to get business insurance. Actually, business insurance is not as expensive as a lot of people think. Business ex business insurance uh, will protect you from a lot of things, a lot of you know liabilities and things that can happen with you know being a business owner. If you get sued or uh, I don't know you you your studio or whatever you if you have like a brick and mortar business if it got broken into or something you know you can file an insurance claim for that business insurance can cost as low as like a hundred and something dollars a year a year okay not per month y'all but a year so business insurance does not have to be expensive but it's so worth so worth the investment so definitely consider business insurance you can get business insurance with like next insurance or uh, like a local insurance company if you type in on Google insure business insurance agency or business insurance brokerage or something like that near me you will you'll be able to find uh, you know a business insurance brokerage or company that can offer you business insurance again you can use next insurance as well because they're very inexpensive also okay let's see what we have here okay awesome all right so we have business insurance okay Another thing is you want to have like documentation in place, right? So contracts and agreements. We're talking about like independent independent contractor agreements. If you plan on hiring like independent contractors, if you plan on hiring W-2 employees, right? Uh, if you plan on working with clients, you want to have agreements or contracts in place to protect the relationship between you as the business owner, coach, consultant with your clients. Okay, so for example, if you uh, had a payment structure where they're paying you monthly for a period of time or you promise to deliver a certain service for a period of time and all of that jazz, you want to have it somewhat in writing in a contract or an, an agreement. Where can you get this contract and agreement? You can get an attorney. You can hire an attorney to do this for you. And I know it may sound, okay, I don't want think this to sound intimidating, y'all, but I want you guys to understand that it is so important and, and why it's also so important because it's going to protect you in the long run, okay? It may seem intimidating now or seem like it's gonna cost you a lot of money, but trust me when I say it's worth the investment and it may just be a couple hundred bucks, right? Maybe $200, depends on the attorney or the lawyer, uh, maybe $300, $600, 
$800. It really depends on the attorney, okay? You can find a decent, a solid attorney who won't charge you too much money, right? Whatever you deem as too much money uh, for to write up these contracts and agreements that you can replicate, that you can use time and time and time again with your client. So it's going to be so worth it because it's going to protect you, okay, and help you to get your money in the event that, you know, things happen, okay? So it's worth it. So you want to have contracts and agreements in place, especially, like I said before, if you plan on hiring independent contractors, okay? Have those in place, you guys. You can go to even Upwork to and type in attorney, uh, attorney, you know, legal, legal attorney or business attorney or whatnot, and have them write you up an agreement that you know, contract and agreements that are tailored to your business. Okay, to make sure that it's tailored to your business. So it's protecting your business, protecting you as a business owner. So you want to have those contracts. And agreements in place all right now talking about talking about in the event that you plan on hiring contractors or you know working with clients another thing I didn't actually really write this down on my list but you want to somebody says somebody asked is uber driver considered a business I, I get what you're saying so with being an Uber driver, you're technically an independent contractor. Yes, you can be considered a business owner. Now, if you want to take this business seriously, let's say you are a, an Uber driver, maybe you do Instacart, whatever that is, you can still create it, create an actual business uh, you know, using that model. So for example, everything that I talked about earlier, the business contact information, all of that, if you want to launch it as an official business, you can, right? But what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that you're doing all the steps that I mentioned earlier. Okay. The business contact, incorporating the business, uh, you know, getting your business bank account and having those funds, the money that you're making from Uber or whatever independent contracting job or side gig that you have, have the income coming from that going into your business bank account. It's just so important. I can't stress that enough. Uh, the reason why I'm stressing that too is because I see a lot of entrepreneurs make this mistake with not having an actual business bank account. At the end of the day, why would you want to combine everything, right? Why would you not want to separate your personal, uh, your personal income or your personal finances from your business finances? Okay, when it's tax time, it's so much easier for your bookkeeper or your accountant to, you know, sort things, <laughs> sort things through, and for you, uh, you know, as a business owner, to 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 properly balance stuff, you know, figure out what your profit and loss is and all of that when things are separated and lenders, as I said before, a lot of lenders will not lend to uh, business owners who do not have a business bank account. All right. It doesn't show that you're serious. Uh, and, you know, there's other reasons behind it, but you want to separate it. But to answer your question, uh, Pete, Pablo, uh, yes, you can be considered a, a business owner. All right. Just set it up launch it like an official business all right cool beans so talking about contractors hiring independent contractors and all of that you when it, when you when you start a business yes the first week two weeks month you may be doing everything Okay, you're the cleaner, the marketer, the copywriter, the the social media manager, the admin, the assistant, the everybody, right? You are everybody when you just start a business, okay? But eventually, especially when you get that first uh, sale or the first few sales from your clients, customers, you want to reinvest that into your business by hiring some help. Okay. 
Now hear me out on this. As a new business owner, I understand, trust me, I've been there been there as well, right? And that's the reason why I'm sharing all of this with you. Uh, as someone who have, you know, started a new business before, I've been there where I've just started a new business. Um, I've started several businesses uh, and have grown them. And in the beginning, you know, it was very hard because, <laughs> you know, you're doing everything, right? I'm doing everything. But there has to be a point where you hire some help to avoid burnout. And if you're looking at really scaling your business, like truly scaling your business and growing your business, there's no way that you can be everything. You can't be everything within your business. And you're, you're not meant to know everything either. So if you're not good with creating websites, that's okay. You don't need to know how to do everything. You don't need to know how to create a website. Instead of spending 30, 40 hours trying to figure out how in the world I'm going to create this website, spend 200, 300, 700 dollars, whatever that may be, to hire a uh, a, a website developer and copywriter, you know, to create the website for you. While you focus on your genius zone, focus on closing the sale, focus on, uh, you know, what you are good at, you know, you stay in your genius zone, okay? Stay in that lane and outsource and hire other people to help you, whether that's, you know, you're focusing on, uh, closing a couple of deals this week. So you know what, instead of you spending two, three hours this week cleaning the house, you pay somebody a hundred dollars to clean your house. Okay. Sometimes we just have to outsource things. It's a win-win situation. Okay. You gave somebody a job, freed up your time. You're able to close that sale. It's a win-win win situation. All right. And at some point we have to start thinking like that as high level entrepreneurs, okay? All right, some point we're going to have to simply outsource. Again, I know it may be an investment and it may be it may seem like an investment to you, but that, that's what it is. It's an investment, okay? It's going to be worthwhile. It's going to free up your time, but not, not only free up your time, but allow you to focus on your in your genius zone and allow you to focus on income producing activities okay income producing activities i can probably call it ipas all right <laughs> it'll allow you to focus on your ipas uh and so that's what hiring help does when you get your those your first chunk change in your business set aside some okay yes i know you know, you, you have bills to pay, you know, we have our bills to pay and everything, but pay yourself first. Set aside something to reinvest into your business that's going to free up your time, whether that's hiring an assistant to do those little admin tasks, right? Sending out those emails, email reminders, this, that, and the third, uh, you know, all of those things. Get somebody else to do that so you can focus on other things that's going to actually create income, you know, revenue for you. You know what I'm saying? I want you guys to look at the bigger picture. You have to look at the bigger picture if you're aspiring to be a growing, thriving uh, entrepreneur, small business owner, right? L think bigger picture, all right? Again, you may not be able to do it in the beginning as soon as you launch, right? You may not be able, you not, you may not be able to hire 10, 15 people. I'm not saying you need to do that, okay? Sometimes, in a, new, in a business, sometimes you only need that one uh, person, that one support, right? That, that tech guy. Uh, if you're somebody who does, um, uh, you know, webinars all the time or something like that, right? You need that tech guy to help you make sure that your webinar is ran smoothly or whatnot. Or like I said before, that admin person. Okay, so Pete asked how... Okay, I'm not asking what, I'm not sure what Pete, 
is asking but uh it's important to look at look at your your process as a business owner and that's another thing i can probably throw in there by the way you guys if you want um somewhat this step-by-step -step of how to launch a business or you know launching a business properly i have some of this step in my if you go to my name up top if you're on TikTok, you can go to my bio uh go to that link in my bio and you'll be able to see uh that launch that biz guide and you'll be able to download that guide for free okay uh, if you are here on youtube you may be able you may be able to uh the link should be somewhere <laughs> the link should be somewhere in my description on youtube my stand store uh link where you can go ahead and grab my launch that biz guide all right okay <clears throat> so yeah when you get to a point where you have enough you know revenue some sales coming in hire some help y'all hire some help trust me do not be cheap it's gonna be it's gonna be worth it worth the investment to hire some help you're going to feel like a boss okay all right and not only that like i said before you're going to be able to focus on income producing activities so if it means hiring the copywriter the social media manager if you're somebody who constantly have to be on social media you know posting stuff all the time then eventually hire the social media manager to create your post for you schedule your post for you edit the videos and you know all that jazz okay so um but that's where the contracts will come in handy when you hire independent contractors uh, like I said before all right then startup funding let's talk about startup funding you guys you don't want to wait until you're in dire need for funding to apply for funding you want to prepare yourself all right and also you want to build that history so that when it's time for you to really scale or take out a larger amount you can show that you've already done this before so you want to get the funding before you actually need the funding all right now one of the places that you can go uh, to get startup capital so here's the thing there are not a lot of lenders out there especially uh you know big banks the well-known banks the national banks that we know they aren't willing to uh lend business loans to brand new business like that right off the fly like there's a whole process um and and even the whole process sometimes your your chances are there's a 90 percent chance that you get denied because statistics show that 88 to about 90 something percent of business owners get denied from national banks like that's just how it is i'm not talking about like you know smaller credit cards you know those you can get but i'm talking about like a good chunk change of you know business loans right um again that's where the alternative lending industry comes in so if you want like let's say a startup loan you don't have any revenue to show for it to show you know these lenders that hey you can pay the loan back uh, there are just a select few lenders who may be able to lend to you but yes they do have some requirements right credit score has to be at least 680 I did do a video the other day uh, I believe it was yesterday I had it posted on my YouTube channel where I talked about um, how you can get a line of credit a business line of credit up to like 100k right as a startup whether or not you start if you started four months ago or you plan on starting you have not started if you have a 680 credit score and you don't have like a, a bank bankruptcy reporting or recent late payments reporting you can get a business line of credit biz cred co capital okay biz cred co capital if you go to biz cred co capital.com 
I can probably try to see if I can pin it in here. But if you go to BizCreditCo Capital, BizCreditCoCapital.com, um, you can apply for a loan. If you already, if you are an established business owner and you know you earn revenue as well and you've been in business for a while whether that's a year two years five years you can also get startup capital but i'm just talking about uh let's see what is tiktok doing here i have to verify to continue oh there we go what is going on here okay there we go all right, this tea talk is doing some verification thing. But anyway, uh, where was I? Where was I? Yes, you can get a startup loan, you guys, as a new business. A new business. Okay, hear me out. You can get a startup loan as a brand new business, whether or not you have started or launched your business with BizCred Co. Capital. So BizCred Co. Capital uh, you know, we partner with other lenders directly, direct lenders who offer business loans, whether that's SBA loans, SBA loans, for those of you who don't know, it's pretty much backed by the government. Um, and we offer, you know, equipment loans, business line of credits, merchant cash advance, uh, invoice factoring type of loan. So if you are a business that receives invoicing uh, from your clients and, you know, we can verify those invoices, uh, typically with other companies that we can, you know, look at the credibility of those companies, you can get funding that way too. There's so many different creative ways, creative niches to getting funding for your business but if you're in your business which is what I, i'm really focusing on tonight you know starting a business you can get a business loan business line of credit actually up to 100k with base credit co-capital um, again we partner with just a select few lenders who offer these syndicated uh what we call a syndicated line of credit which not a lot of uh banks and you know companies are doing Okay, not a lot of companies are going to straight up lend a new brand new business owner a hundred thousand dollars in funding, a line of credit, right? Now, there are other creative ways to do this, right? Some people consider it, you know, credit card stacking, stuff like that, uh, where you can get a, a few or a couple of business credit cards, uh, you know, with certain limits and that that can act as funding but um, lines of credits are typically preferred are better uh, than that option really but that's an option too that's an option too and actually let me just throw this hack in here if you do that if you do that whole credit card stacking thing um, or you know you get a couple of credit cards let's say you got four credit cards with a limit of 20k okay that's 80k that that that's 80k right there if you need that to process your payroll which i don't know why i don't even have this on my list but if you plan on <laughs> if you plan on paying yourself properly i did a video recently you can check out my youtube channel where i talked about how to pay yourself properly as a business owner you can use platforms like gusto which um i use as well to like run payroll uh if you plan on, let's say, hiring a W-2 employees, you can actually pay contractors as well using platforms like Gusto. So Gusto is like an ADP. If you've ever had like a W-2 job, if you've ever had a W-2 paying job, you may, your company may have used ADP. That's like one of the, okay, but we won't, we won't um, go into that too much because I don't want to really promote any particular, you know, company. But Gusto, I personally use Gusto, so you know, and I really like it. My CPA recommended it as well. I actually started using Gusto before my CPA recommended it. Uh, and so you can run payroll if you plan to pay independent contractors or W-2 employees with a payment processing, or not a payment processor, but a, like a payroll service, okay? Uh, if you use QuickBooks, you can use QuickBooks to possibly 
Um, but I said that to say, if you use credit cards, if you plan on doing like stacking, you can use a company called like Plastic. This is a pro tip here. You can use a company called Plastic to pay yourself from these credit cards. Okay. If it missed you, it missed you. All right. <laughs> I told you to take notes, make sure that you're taking notes and you're using a, you know, pen as well to, to write the things down. Okay. Plastic, pay yourself from these credit cards. Okay. All right. Let's go. So where was I? Because I did not even have these some of these things on my notes here. But we were talking about funding. All right. You can go to Biz Cred Co. B I Z Cred Co. B I Z C R E D Co. Capital to apply for funding for your business. Let me know if you guys have any questions at all in the chat. Questions, questions, let me know. All right, so if you are new here, uh, again, I'm sharing with you steps to launching a credible business. All right, steps to launching a credible business and you know some of the mistakes that entrepreneurs make when starting a new business. All right, we've been on here for about an hour or so. I'm gonna try to wrap up, but let me just go um, as a refresher if you're just joining. All right, first things first, Figure out your business contact information, right? Your address, get a virtual address, Opus, Alliance. There are so many different uh, virtual office companies that you can apply for a virtual office with, but you want to make sure that it is an actual suite number and not a PO box because when it's time for you to apply for stuff, you won't be able to use a PO box, okay? So that's first things first. Uh, incorporate, incorporate using Inkfile, now known as Busy. All right, it's free to use them except for the state fee. So it's free except for the state fee. Okay, uh, let's see. Marie says, Do you do personal consultation? Uh, yes, I so. I used to do where, you know, I would speak with people for like an hour or so. Uh, I do free consultations for people who are um, interested in working, working with me like one on one, right? Working side by side with me, um, whether that's to launch a credible business uh, and, you know, build solid business credit to be better prepared for funding. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, what I call a discovery call to kind of gauge where you're at to see if, you know, our program is the right fit for you and to see if you're the right fit for our program. So if that's something that you may be interested in working, uh, you know, alongside me for the next few weeks, um, then that's something that we can look into. I'll be sure to leave the link where you can book that chat with me or somebody from my team in the chat, okay? So that you'll be able to, uh, so that we'll be able to connect and see if we're a good fit to working together. So I hope that answers your question. Okay, so incorporate, uh, get your tax ID, all right? Again, you can get this from the IRS. You don't need to pay anybody for this. Please do not pay anybody for your EIN. It's literally, you get it in like 30 seconds, <laughs> literally. All right, you go to the website. It's available to apply for Monday through Friday from about 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to about 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, okay? You won't be able to do it now. You won't be able to do it on the weekends or on holidays, I believe, but Monday through Friday, you can go to the irs.gov website and apply for it. Don't pay anybody for it, all right? Uh, then we talked about number four, your DUNS number. It's your data universal numbering system. It identifies the existence of your business globally. It's going to be the number that you use to prove the credibility of your business. If you want to, uh, apply for a corporate lease, plan, 
plan on leasing an apartment building or a building in your company name in your corporation if you plan on financing a a vehicle in your business name, leasing a vehicle in your business name, applying for a business loan, some grants also, some grant programs also require that you have a DUNS number. So you might as well just get it from the beginning because it does take a while to get it back. About 60 days or so, it can take up to that time, but honestly, you can probably get it back in like two, three weeks. Uh, you can also pay to have it expedited, but the DUNS number is free, okay? The standard application, it is free. Uh, somebody asked, let's see. Yeah, that's a good question, and I see that happen so often. So somebody's asking, Shalice is asking, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Let me know if I'm saying it correctly. Shalice is asking, okay, what if I already have an EIN but haven't filed with the state? Um, and I see this happening... I see this happening so often, and so that's why I have this list here of the order that you want to focus on because uh, if you file your EIN, I'll address your question specifically in a second, but if you file your EIN first and you don't file it with the state, and then you go to file it with the state, and then they say the name is not available, because that happens. It comes back where the name is not available, somebody all, already has have that name, you then have to pretty much get a new EIN because it has to match. You want it to match because if there's inconsistency with applying for stuff and all of that, it can cause issues. So you want your, and I've, I've seen this, and the reason why I'm telling you this is because I have seen it um, personally working with clients. So this is what I do. Uh, you know, I help my clients launch their business properly, properly structure their business, all that jazz. And um, you know, with being in this space, I've, I've see I see that happen quite often. So you wanna, that's why you want to incorporate first. But again, there's probably nothing that you can't fix, really, right? So if you did that, that's okay. You know, don't feel bad about it. It can be fixed. Uh, yes. Okay, yeah, yeah, it can be fixed, but um, that's why you want to incorporate first and then get your EIN. Don't go and get your EIN and then try to incorporate. Wrong, wrong order, because again, you may have to do it again because some it somebody may already have that name, okay? And then now everything is mixed, mixed matched, right? Because the EIN also has to be tied to a name. Unless, I don't know if... You have an EIN that's tied to your, do you have an EIN, that, EIN that's tied to just your name? Are you a sole proprietor? Did you register, let's say like a DBA with your county clerk? Like did you register a name at all or you know, with your county clerk? Not necessarily the state. I know you said that you are not incorporated, but did you register like a DBA with your county clerk? Or do you did you just apply for an EIN underneath your personal name? And if you did that, it's cool. You can you can start over. Okay, you can start over, especially if if you just launched. So once you incorporate, you incorporate, and then you're going to go and apply for your EIN to match what the state accepted. So make sure the state actually accepted this name and it's incorporated, okay? Okay, and it's incorporated and then you go and apply for your EIN in that order. I registered with the county clerk, with the county with a business name, gotcha. So you probably just did a DBA like a doing business as that's fine too but the uh, the only issue that i have with dbas nothing is wrong with having a dba um i have you know a couple dbas that i use <clears throat> but it's underneath a structured business underneath a business that is uh registered incorporated with the state itself so nothing's wrong with having a dba because you can have beautiful thing about dba is you can have you can have multiple so instead of changing your business name all the time or having um uh you know changing your business name all the time you can just have a couple dbas 
but you want to do it underneath your structured business, whether that's an LLC or uh, an S corporation, C corporation, whatever, whatever you deem is best for you or whatever your business, you know, CPA or business attorney deem is the best business structure for your business. The most common business structure, uh, as we probably all know, is an LLC uh, but because it protects, it's, it's easy, it's simple. Um, but it also protects your personal assets, right? You're separating your personal liabilities from your business liability. So you may want to consider doing that as well. But um, is it going to affect you filing taxes? Not necessarily. I mean, you're just going to file taxes with, you know that EIN but if you if you want to protect your business you want to register it with the state okay all right y'all so and then we talked about yeah we said the Dunn's number uh, number four and then number five a business bank account you can use a uh, you're very welcome uh, you can use a fintech bank super easy to apply for all right uh, Blue Vine, Novo, number six, get a business website. Uh, you can use Size GBT for free or get, you know, get a web developer or somebody to create you a simple website. I mean, you can use Wix, I mean, to create a simple website, buy a domain, but you wanted to buy the domain first, right? Secure the domain. And if you want to take it a little bit further, you know, secure the social media platforms, right? When you secure your domain, secure Instagram, secure YouTube if you want to, secure Facebook, you know, all that jazz, okay? And then payment processors. So how are you going to get paid by your clients and your customers? Get a payment processor, Square, Stripe, PayPal Business. Not regular PayPal, but PayPal Business. You can get working capital from PayPal Business as well. Okay, and then those payment processors, once you get paid there, it sends the money, you know, directly to your business bank account. Okay, uh, business insurance, next insurance, local insurance, whatever works for you. Startup funding, again, biz cred co capital. Whether you have a startup business, you already have an established business, goes to biz cred co capital okay and we can help you get funding for your business um let me see if we can put it in the chat put the website in the chat for you guys we'll put the link in the chat so you can go and apply for funding also for more resources like business resources I'll also put uh, my my link here for you so that You guys can grab like my free guides stuff like that if you want to build solid business credit I have a guide in there uh, that you can grab. I also have a launch that biz guide that has some of these steps uh, that we're talking about today uh, on that guide. Okay, so you can go grab that there. I'm going to put the link in the chat so you guys have it. But let me know in the meantime if you have any questions, y'all. Let's copy this link. Okay, let's see. All right, and then we talked about contracts and agreements as well. 
contracts and agreements, y'all. If you plan on hiring independent contractors, you want to make sure that you have contracts and agreements. It's better to just invest, uh, you know, pay for it, do it right the first time, and then uh, you can reuse it, right? So you're going to reuse these contracts and agreements with your clients, with your customers, uh, with the independent contractors that you plan on hiring. It just protects you. Uh, and additionally, if you plan on, uh, well, yes, if you plan on hiring like employees and all of that, uh, which is also in essential in, you know, launching a business, you want to figure out, again, your process. What does your process look like when you take on a client, right? Your onboarding process, your emailing process, all of that jazz, like your communication process with your clients, your customers, um, your social media management, what does that look like? Write that down and figure out your dream team. Write it down. Like even if you financially, you know, practically you can't afford it right now, still write down what your dream team looks like. Do you need a copywriter? What would it take so much you know, stress off of you if you had a copywriter, if you had a social media manager, if you had somebody managing your emails for you, like your business emails, you know, what does your dream team look like? If, it, if you had somebody doing cleaning for you once every two weeks or something like that, right? What does your dream team look like? And how much does it cost? Ask yourself, how much does it actually cost? Don't be afraid to write it down, okay? The more we write things down, the easier it is to come into fruition, believe it or not. All right. Habakkuk, I think two verse two or something like that. Habakkuk talks about the Bible. That's the scripture in the Bible, writing the vision down and making it plain, make it plain upon tables. Okay. When you see it, it's easier for you to believe that it's tangible because it, it's, you can tangibly see it. So write the vision down and make it plain. Okay, what does your dream team looks like? Your dream team look like? And then once you start getting clients, some revenue in your business, reinvest that revenue into hiring help. You the one thing you don't want to do is have burnout. Okay, and again, like I said before, if you plan on scaling your business um, or growing, you know, and just not having burnout, then. Um, You want to make sure that you're hiring help, okay? So, uh, we talked about that. Business insurance, next insurance, startup funding, Biscred Co. Capital. If you have questions, you can email loans at Capital as well com. All right? And I think that's all I have for y'all tonight. It is a Sunday night, and everybody look like they are sleeping or getting ready for the week. So, I'm going to be off of here. I won't be on here any longer, but if you guys have any final questions, feel free to let me know. And also I will have the link. I'll drop the link as well to, uh, if you want to, if you want to book a call with me, if you want to work closely with me to properly launch your business, launch a credible business, better position your business for funding, I will drop the link where you can possibly book a call with me, myself or my team, um, and apply to work with me, okay? So I will have that link in the live stream. There you have it. Any final questions? So there are the links. If you want to apply for business funding, uh, you can check out my free business resources, uh, free and paid business resources. You can find it in the uh, second link, the stand store link. And if you want to book a call with me, you can find that in the third link. All right, y'all, that's all I have for you guys tonight. I am, um, Viola Lewis is asking, what's the business credit card? Uh, what exactly are you asking? I didn't mention any 
Viola. So Viola, I did not mention any particular business credit card. I was talking earlier about uh, how you can get startup funding with Biz Credit Co. Capital as a new business owner or somebody who's planning on starting a business. If you have like a 680 credit score, uh, we offer what is called, it's called a syndicated line of credit, all right? Syndicated line of credit, basically. Um, and you can get this as a startup. Uh, again, if you have no recent charge-offs, bankruptcies, late payments, 680 credit score or higher. Uh, if you have an established business as well, you can also get funding through BizCredit Co. Capital. Uh, we partner directly with business lenders, all right? Business lenders who offer simple, fast funding. So we're not talking about like the national banks that take forever and have you with all these different all these tax returns and paperwork and all that jazz simple uh we're talking about simple funding solutions for your business um credit card i was also saying that you know there is the option to do like apply for multiple credit cards as a business a business owner um i think you're you said best card is probably what you're saying Okay, best card maybe. I mean, there's several business credit cards that you can apply for. I mean, there's you know Chase Business Credit Card, Chase Inc., um, you know American Express, those different credit cards. We can probably talk about that in another live. Let me know if you want me to talk about that a little bit. Um, and you can do what is called like credit card stacking, like getting multiple credit cards. But uh, there is a particular way you want to do that though because um, with like American Express they and I break this down a lot more into my funding program as well because I have like a funding an in-depth funding uh, blueprint uh, coaching program course right that breaks down exactly how you apply for the different cards and in what order, uh, because like with American Express, you can apply for like multiple, and get approved for multiple, right? But they have like a specific, a minimum time frame of when you can do that and all that jazz. So uh, that's an option too, credit card stacking. And I mentioned before, you can use uh, a company to pay yourself from that. Instead of doing like cash advances, you can do, uh, you can use like the plastic company to uh, pay yourself or you know basically transfer money to you so you are welcome all right y'all if there's no other questions i am out it was an absolute pleasure um and I will probably be back here live maybe next week. Maybe next next Sunday, <laughs> I'll probably be back here um, sharing some more gems. I'll probably share the same thing, but go a little bit more in depth. Again, you can find some of what I mentioned here tonight on this live. You can find that in uh, my stand store link above. All right, y'all, take care. Uh, okay. And